Well, I got everything cleaned, you know, all the dust off the walls and ready to paint. And then I realized that I didn't cut the tile yet. So I went ahead and marked it out, with, you know, lined everything up, squared it up with the laser. And we'll get the circular saw out and zip this off real quick. But you know, I'll have to clean the room again. So it's not going to get paint today. I'll get paint tomorrow. It's too bad. Two days of painting because it uh, first coat dried and you can still kind of see some of the color in the back. So I, I think this will be okay. Um, should be able to get things back on the wall this morning. I wanted to put the pan in, but I got to leave for work in two hours already. So I think they're better off kind of cleaning things up, uh, get that stud in, in place. And then tomorrow I'll be able to get up in the morning mix up some thin set do the pan and float the walls yeah yeah i want to make sure i have enough time that if something gets screwed up i'm not rushing around going to work and then leaving a mistake to come home to later so I make sure to get that thing down and have time to, to fix anything that goes goes wonky with it so yeah <laughs> getting there i got that last stud in place um clearly not going to be 16 inches over there's just too much junk to cut around so we put it as as close as I was comfortable getting it to that hot water pipe, which you now I think about it, I wonder if there's a code for that. Probably not, because they attach pipes directly to studs and stuff. So and they pass them through floorboards and all kinds of crap. So it should be fine. It would just be inconvenient. Like if this leaked, right? We'd have to take the whole valve off the wall and mess with it. And we already leak checked. So this will give our niches as much. You know, they're gonna be pretty skinny. Um, and then we kind of redecided on this one instead of Maybe we'll do two shelves. We could do like a small one for like razor blades and stuff and then two taller ones. So right here is about where she can reach without being uncomfortable. Um, yeah, not a lot of niche space. I wish we had more, but it is what it is. It'll be nice and clean. And then this wall will be just flat and glass and it'll look really good. Um, I'm gonna sneeze, I think. <laughs> All right, so hit any of the spots where we dribbled like paint and stuff on this um, just to make sure there's not crap sticking up uh, and get the get the floor pan in today float the walls out and then that means tomorrow should be able to put the screws in the wall because you don't you don't float the walls out and then screw them in because you can just squish them back to where they would have been anyway so yeah well we might do a couple screws just real gentle you don't you don't recess them in like like in a normal install it'll just make sure the panel doesn't you know, flop over in a tornado or something. Um, yeah, and tomorrow we'll do the the banding and the waterproofing. So the one thing that I do want to set up is some practice tiles. So I'm going to cut um, cut a couple of these in half just to check the saw out, and then at the same time we'll take a piece of our scrap board, right? So I'll lop a lop a little rectangle off this and use the the thin set to mount a couple tiles and then see uh, you know peel one up a day and just see how they're bonding right okay, so here's a little tile saw this has a tiny water reservoir which i should probably clean out so it's not so dirty but this part doesn't matter um it's got a blade in it that's supposed to be for glass um and i set the set the guard at four inches these are eight inch tiles uh -huh. Well, they claim they're three inch tiles. I don't know how close they are. Seven and some change, whatever. Uh, point being, one side we're cutting with the rail at four inches. So I'm unsure if they, you know, they have zero in the middle and it looks like they're compensating for the width of a blade, not necessarily this blade. Now, I don't know if they're all the same, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut, we're going to cut one face up, one face down, and then we'll put, so if there's a four, then it was the four inch side, numbers up towards us, and then question mark, you know, what's left, we don't care what's left over. Uh, all we want, we just know that this, this is the side that was up when we cut it. And we'll have to, before we put it on the board, we'll clean those off so they don't interrupt our thin set.
don't know if there's a good way to get that out without chipping it because you don't want to bring it back through the blade but i don't necessarily want to push it out the back side either oh that's really good there's a couple chips it's on that, that side so at the end of the cut got a couple chips in the paint this side doesn't have any got a little lip right there though Yeah, this end of the cut wasn't the greatest. I don't know if that was my technique or what. No, I'll try it. I guess I should probably be careful rubbing my hands on that. That didn't chip the paint at all. The edges look good. Still had a little nick at the back there. So what we might need to do, um, we'll probably, we'll do it on more pieces when we go. But it may be a case that we need to we need to push in and then flip it over and cut the rest to keep the the back edge of this one side from getting weird on us. But overall, I mean, the blade works well. It, Good thing I didn't forget. Um, got holes for the two pipes that will be coming through the wall as well. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready. I trimmed a little bit, make sure the drain's going to sit right. So, can really think about if I'm missing anything. So, we'll need to we'll give the floor a quick sponge to both pick up any debris and get a little bit of moisture into the top of it, so it doesn't it doesn't wick all the the moisture out of the thin set. When we put it down, you don't want like puddles of water. You just want it kind of a little bit damp. Um, but yeah, we should be able to mix up some thin set, put down the floor. We use thin set and RTV compound. We already did one side, um, and get the drain put in place. And then this wall, actually, I, I checked it with um, pushed up against the boards, right? And it's there's the thing like it's plumb. Right, and it's and it's flat. Like I'm not getting big gaps on my level. Right, so I think we don't need to float that wall. We'll pry it. We'll pry it to float the back one. I mean, we know we'll float the back one because the foam sticks out right, a little bit. So this one we won't build. So we'll put the pan in. We'll screw this wall up the way it's supposed to be with the screws, and then we'll float the other wall up. Now, one thing I also want to do once this pan's in place is I'll, oh, I should put the curbs down. Oh, we'll have plenty of working time. Put the floor down and I want to cut a piece of plywood to so at least a couple strips maybe to put over it. So once that drains in place, you can set something to protect it. Cause you can even see right here where you know, I was messing with the drain, right? And I went to stand up and I had my knuckles down and I put two little dents in the foam. Now, I don't think that's going to matter when we go to put the tile on. It's not like there's going to be dents in the tile, right? It's stupid. But just another reason, like, you look at this and like, you got to be careful with these things. It's uh, back to what I said before about how the pros like the mud pans. It's like, you're not going to get that with a mud pan. No. But you're, a mud pan would also add a couple hundred pounds to our second floor bathroom, and I'm not interested in doing that at all. I changed my mind. I'm going to mix up a whole bag. Uh, I think it would be a mistake in this case, at least the first time, to mix half a bag. Um, I think we're going to end up using a lot on those studs to get the walls level. And I don't want to be halfway through that and then run out and need to mix more. Because their procedure, you you know, you mix them together, you wait 10 minutes, and then you stir it again for another 3 minutes. So 5 minutes mixing, 10 minutes wait, 3 minutes mixing. Um, so we'll just do the whole thing. And then they have two different mixtures, either seven and a half to eight and a half quarts for setting the membranes, or five and a half to six and a half for setting tile. So this one, the more water is thinner, probably to make sure the membranes don't stick out too far. And the thick stuff is for, for setting tile. So we're gonna go with the thick stuff to set our pan and set our walls. We're not gonna use the thin mixture. And five and a half to six and a half, we'll do the uh, 
let's do six quarts even right dead in the middle and, and see how it works out so there's six quarts of water put it in the bucket first that way when you, you don't end up with dry spots in the corner of the bucket so we're gonna pour that in see how much dust we can kick up in the garage here maybe I'm gonna go here <laughs> and do something smart for once so we'll ugh, bugs and stuff anyway yeah so we'll get this stirred up five minutes with the drill I think it had a, a speed see, less than 300 rpm which one Type 2 drill, 0 to 575, so half, <laughs> half speed on one. That seems pretty slow, but I, that's what it says, 0 to 575. So, yeah, apparently we're not supposed to go nuts with it. So I'm just going to follow the directions to a T, because why not? Okay, maybe next round, uh, a little bit taller bucket. <laughs> we'll see. So five minutes. Here's our bucket mixed up. That's six quarts for a 150 pound bag of Kirby All Set. Ah, this is fun to carry up the stairs. You can see why tile guys, I wouldn't want to fight one. But uh, floor's moistened. Everything's done except notching the wall pieces. I didn't think about that because I have the curb butting up against this and then the wall coming on top of it. Um, but that's fine. That'll be a pretty quick thing to do. Okay, so of a five gallon bucket, I mean, right now we're sitting roughly 12 inches of material inside. Okay, so floors spread and ready, and it looks like we're nine, maybe eight and a half, nine inches. Uh, so realistically, use a quarter of a bucket, which would be a quarter of a bag just for the floor. So it may end up that we only end up using half a bag, and that, it's a bit of a waste, 15 bucks worth of material, but uh, if somebody said I'll pay you $15 and not have to mix this twice, or no, I'd pay them not to mix it twice. Yeah, I'd probably say yes. So anyway, get the floor in, uh, get the curbs in. Those I'll have to, I'll butter up a wall a little bit, I think, on that. And then something I, well, I think there's enough space. There's a little bit of a gap at the ceiling for that, so we had to elongate that hole. But I didn't think about measuring for the thin set when I cut the wall, so hopefully these other two aren't too tight. If so, we just trim it. I think we have plenty of working time. Okay, it's pins. The curb's in place, and when you do these, you kind of wiggle and make sure with your level right, that you have a little bit of an angle, right? So if I lift the sand to level, there's a gap, so the water will run off into the shower. You don't want it pulling up in between that top piece of tile and the glass. So next step we'll get some thin set in there to uh, put the drain in place. So we're going to do that with thin set but when we put the membranes on top we're going to use the Ardex um, to bond the membranes together. So they can drain next and then get some cardboard down to walk on. I think plywood's probably overkill, we'll just put down some cardboard uh, and then we'll get this wall up. So things are going really well. I'm, ha I'm happy, happy with it. You know, it feels good to have everything just come together, um, to peel a little bit of stuff off the walls. And I got to get this out of this groove, right? Because we want to tuck our tile down in there. And then this guy, right there, drain, the height's adjustable. So this part gets bonded into that little circle, which we'll do, I think, after the membrane's up. Like I said, we're going to put this membrane on with the Ardex. So I scraped down the thin set to give it a good bubble surface. So yeah, here's the wall uh, prepped to be floated out. Now it's generally a little prettier than that, right? If you were on an interior wall like this one where you didn't have the foam, you can just scrape, you know, against the 2 by 4 and you get a nice triangle um, all the way down. But we know that our center is the furthest in this side. We don't need anything because we want it to be flush with that and then become straight this way. So we know where our low spots were. We put a little bit more there. Um, I was mildly concerned, but not really, that there wouldn't be anywhere for it to squish. Like maybe there's gonna be a point where I push it in and it just won't go in anymore and the wall will be bowed out towards me, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think it's gonna work out really well. So we'll go ahead and get both boards up. We'll cut our notch for the corner like we did this one. Both boards up and then we'll probably start 
at that seam. You get the thing level and just start, you, it's gentle. You just you get them up, you get your... Okay, uh, like spilled milk. <laughs> so get, we'll get the boards up there and we'll do, you know, multiple angles, just checking, making sure that everything is flush. We're not necessarily looking for it to be perfectly plumb. This side's plumb, that side's plumb, these are in the wall. So it'll naturally be plumb enough for a shower wall. The important part is we want it flat this way, especially because it's glass. We don't want light flick, reflecting funny angles and all the tiles are having sticking out from each other. So yeah, let's get to it. Once these are up, um, what I may do, I'll screw in on that row and then this row just to keep them from flippy flopping around and maybe I'll, I'll sink one on the seam but not tighten it. You don't want to tighten it like this because it'll squish it in and it won't be flush anymore. So we'll get those up and then with the remaining thin set, um, we'll measure that. It looks like we probably have a third of a bucket left roughly. Uh, and then we'll cut off our little strap piece and get our test tiles set um, and labeled so that we can check those out over the next couple of days. There we go. So I got a couple screws there and there. Notice these aren't cinched in. Same with those. These are because there's no thin set on that wall, so I can keep it nice. But you're looking at, this thing's flexible, so if you, if you just push on it, it's going to look flat. But if you let the sides touch, I mean, you're looking at, you know, we're within a 32nd of an inch across this wall. It feels really good. It's nice and flat. Um, this was the right choice. If we just screwed up the board under the wall, probably 99% of people would, they wouldn't even be able to tell, right? Cause it's one big board if there's a little you know if there's a even an eighth inch uh up and down on the wall like if it sticks in an eighth over that span and you just make sure you tile it nice it'll probably be fine i mean the people that put this floor like you can walk right here and the floor is on level and now the tiles are lined up it all looks like junk but we didn't even notice it when we bought the house we we're just like oh we're gonna redo the bathroom anyway who cares if there's a crack and then when I dig deeper into it, it's like, you really have to be a jackass to like, you know, your corners don't even look, look at shit like that. It's just stupid. So all we got to do now is do our test tile and uh, measure our bucket. You can see there's a screw head in there. These Kirby screws um, had two of them so far. The head snapped off, which I only bought a hundred because I think I needed 94 or something like that. So here's the whole waterproofing the base parts of the waterproofing in place so we have all of our pre-cut pieces over here these are going to go in tomorrow using the r decks instead of thin set uh it's kind of interesting because some of the really good tile guys i've been watching videos of you know, really there's a lot of great information out there uh, they so curdy tells you to, to put this together with thin set, right? Use the thin set to bond all your flanges, except that they're not allowed to do that in Europe. So this is a German product, and in their own country, they don't use thin set, and it's a it's a legal like it's a regulation. It's a, it's a fucking code. So they have a a thing that's like that. It's a two part waterproofing that they use to bond their their membranes together. And um, Isaac Ostrom. Did a shower like that where he used Ardex to bond the membrane to the thing instead of thin set. So that's the plan for tomorrow. So do that in the morning. And we'll just let it dry overnight. Or it's I think that's those four hours until you can flood test it. So maybe we'll just wait four hours. I hope I didn't drop any down on the drain. I'll have to plug I'll put something in there. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. Once that stuff's up, now that I know, you know, this stuff has a good pot life, I can start mixing. Clearly, half batches are plenty uh, for me to start doing tile stuff. But I can tile the floor, tile the curb, and then we'll put down... This cardboard actually fits in there really well. So we'll put that over there, the tile that we put down. Which, well, we'll tile the floor and the curb, and then we'll wait for it to set up for a day. And then we'll just start working our way up the walls, little bits at a time before work. Um, yeah, I'd really like to have the everything done 4th of July weekend. It would be really nice to have this wrapped up by then. So, we'll see. Let's go get our test tiles set. And here we go. I got the little V-notch that uh, this tile calls for. So, all we gotta do is uh, 
and make sure there isn't too much skanky stuff. It's kind of wet. So we're going to put four of these down and exactly how I'm going to do it on the wall. I'm going to end up with, oops, I'll close that off. Let's get the thing, it's going to go on there. You do a little boop, 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 and then you know, everybody in videos they like, put their tile on, make sure you have good coverage, and they peel it up to show you as if I know what I'm looking at. But what it seems to me is that there's a bunch on the tile, and there's some here where it didn't really bond, like didn't grab into the fibers. But that may be just because I peeled it up. Right? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Either way, so we're gonna put four of these on here, and keep them somewhat, well, I want to put them, they're going to be an eighth of an inch apart, so maybe we'll want to do that, because we're, we're trying to see how they dry, right? And the nice thing is they're they're already white on the back, so we don't need to back butter them, we don't need to worry about, you know, how it's going to look with light transmission, that kind of stuff. What I ought to do is go, I got, I bought 2,000 spacers, right? And you don't need that many, but... They're not expensive either. Let me grab some of them. We'll make sure these are spaced apart right. The house is a mess, but everybody uses this, right? You just you only clean when people are coming over. Oh, those are upstairs. All right. Like I said, I got 2,000 of these so that I can just put them up and I can leave them, right? I can leave them the whole time. You'll see, I see dudes, they, they put their tile up. Pros, right? Because they like, these guys know their shit. Like, look, I was nowhere near an eighth. It was way too close. But now they're together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seems good. Um, I'm going to leave these here because I want to see when these are set, how well does it pop out, right? Like, can these just pop off and come out really easy? They probably do because they're plastic and they don't care. But what we'll do is come is tomorrow, um, similar time in the morning, like 11 a.m., We'll try to peel one of these up with a screwdriver and just see what's going on behind it. If ideally, what we have is that because this is only two inches and this is impermeable and this is impermeable and this stuff, even well, it's modified, so it doesn't, I don't know if it needs air to dry or not, right? So, I mean, it, it says it's modified, but it's their modified stuff. So, you'd think that it's designed to dry. Um, in between pieces of membrane, right, to bond that together. So I would imagine this will dry pretty quick. Now, I think part of what will make it dry quickly is that these are only two inch tiles, right? It has to dry through these grout lines and they're nice and close together. If we were working with big, you know, four by four or six, to some giant piece of glass, then it may take days for the center. You know, if this is a 12 by 12 piece of glass, I don't even know if they make that kind of stuff. You know, the middle might not dry very quickly. So. Yeah, we'll let this sit. We'll be able to see on this side how it sets up, and then we'll just over the next four days, one, two, three, four, and just see see how they go.